Hi, I'm Eric with Harris Aerobic located in Granbury, Texas. Today I'm going to show you the step-by-step -step procedure for installing a rebuild kit on a high blow HP80 aerobic system compressor, also called an air pump. This video is intended as instruction and guidance for licensed aerobic septic maintenance technicians only. Any manipulation of electrical breakers or associated wiring should be handled by a licensed electrician or a licensed aerobic septic maintenance technician and is not intended for homeowners, renters, or any occupants with access to the system due to the risk of electrical shock and possible death. A standard high blow HP80 has one port, but for today's instruction, I chose the rebuild on a dual port model. All of the internals for the rebuild are the same, with one exception that I will clarify towards the end of this video. For the sake of timing, I will assume that you have already determined that the compressor requires a rebuild kit and have cut off all power to the control panel prior to disconnecting the compressor. Note, incoming power to the control panel can only be disabled from the main breaker panel in the home. Turning off all of the breakers in the aerobic septic control panel will not de-energize incoming power and the possibility of shock will still be present. A rebuild kit consists of two diaphragms, lock nuts and washers, a new air filter, and plastic safety screw and nut. First, disconnect the power cord from the control panel. Pull the air switch line off of the compressor brass barb fitting and disconnect discharge line rubber mounts. Unscrew the four housing bolts using a Phillips head or a 5 16 socket. Use a flathead screwdriver to pry up housing and set the housing aside. Now the two diaphragms are connected to the magnetic rod block. With both diaphragms functional, there is balance on the rod block and power is held in place with a plastic safety screw. When a diaphragm blows out and the balance is thrown off, the safety screw breaks, disconnecting power to the unit. Remove the broken safety screw. Remove the sound baffle. Slide the clamp down the L-tube and pull the L-tube from the diaphragm housing. Remove the four screws and pull the diaphragm housing from the diaphragm and repeat on the other side. Using a 7mm socket, remove the locking nut and washer from both diaphragms and remove the diaphragms from the magnetic rod block. Note the damage to both diaphragms. This may be present on only one, but both need to be replaced during the rebuild. Line up the new diaphragms on the rod block and tighten down with new washer and lock nuts. Snug these up, but do not over tighten. Once both diaphragms are snugged up, you may need to wiggle them a bit to seat them in the metal base. Place the diaphragm housing back over the diaphragm and snug up mounting screws. Do not tighten down too hard. Replace the L-tube and clamp and repeat on the other side. Note the bare spot on the safety screw shaft. You will tighten down the plastic nut to that bare spot. Install the safety screw through the SP switch and tighten down the plastic nut to the bare spot on the safety screw shaft. I like to hold the nut with a pair of needle nose pliers. Replace the sound baffle. Secure the housing and install a new air filter. Connect the air lines to discharge lines being careful during this step as the PVC is many times Schedule 20, very thin and brittle with exposure and very easy to break. Push the air switch line back onto the brass barb. It's a good idea to snip off a quarter inch of the air switch line to get a more secure connection. Reconnect your hot, neutral, and ground wires inside the control panel. Secure your power cord and air line to the electrical conduit. Put the compressor cover back in place. Re-engage power to the control panel and verify functionality of the compressor. Secure the control panel. And finally, don't forget to place the alarm switch back into run mode. 
As I stated at the beginning of the video, there is one exception to the rebuild that you will encounter from time to time, and that is a unit that utilizes the newer SP micro switch as opposed to the plastic screw and nut. On a disabled unit, you will see a small orange nipple between the switch and the slide. Once the new diaphragms are in place, simply push the slide until it depresses the nipple back into the micro switch housing. This will then allow the unit to be powered. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I hope it helps you better understand the rebuild process for this particular unit. If you feel that this video has helped you, please like and follow for more instructional videos concerning aerobic septic maintenance and repair. Please give me a holler if you have any questions, and you can find us online at harrisaerobic.com, on Facebook, and on Instagram.